Welcome to this week's Pound for Pound ATL edition of the Think Tanks. And you already know, if we think about it, we're going to talk about it. And of course, I'm Toby D. And I thought this would be the perfect week um, going into the week one schedule of the Atlanta Falcons. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the week one schedule is literally right around the corner, September 12th, 1 o'clock p.m., in the Mercedes Benz against the Philadelphia Eagles. And I can't wait. I know you guys will be glued to the, your TVs as well as I will be mine to see exactly what this Atlanta Falcons team looks like because we didn't get a chance to see much of that in the preseason. And we're going to talk about that today and a lot of other things because I want to do a tour recap of a lot of the decisions so far that the new GM Terry Fontenot had made as well as the new head coach who will also be calling the plays for the Atlanta Falcons offense this year, Arthur Smith, have made for the team leading up to this very moment of week one. And, hey, let's get into it. But before we do that, I would like to say if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so. Also, continue to like, share, and make the comments that you have been making. It has been very beautiful. You guys helping us grow as we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers and we are very excited about that and we couldn't do it without you guys. Hey, speaking of not being able to do it without you guys, I want to read a comment uh, or paraphrase a comment, if you will, from a gentleman, uh, a pound for pound loyalist in Mark Davis who made a comment on JR's video that he put out about his recap of the last preseason game of the Atlanta Falcons versus the Cleveland Browns. He actually was blessed by another fan to be able to go to that last preseason game and get a live look in. And this gentleman goes by the name of Mark Davis. I, and I think a lot of us would agree to this um, as I talk about this. And here's what he said, basically. Uh, he said he went into the preseason hungry for wins, and now he is starving. He felt like the new coaching staff strategy will have a positive impact on the depth of his team uh but he is left wondering like many of us how the starters are going to jail week one mark davis we all agree with you on that because we have not seen enough if any of these starters at all in these last preseason games and so we are wondering and have a lot of questions about some of the same things that i'm sure you're going to have a lot of questions about going into the season and all of those questions will not have answers I believe on week one it's going to take some time for us to really see what this team is about and I've given them a five-week plan to really see how well they are able to come together and Arthur Smith and his staff is able to get this team hopefully on a winning track and this brings me to one of the decisions that Terry Fontenot has agreed with and backed up and supported Arthur Smith and doing. They did not play hardly any starters at all in these preseason games. They made a personal note and a commitment to be able to develop and watch what they had on the back end as far as their depth goes and the backup players and seeing where their development was on some of these backup players and had the teaching taken effect. Now, you and I both know this preseason has left a lot to be desired. And I know there are many of you saying, hey, y'all are panicking. Don't panic about preseason. It's just preseason. And I, I feel you. You're going to wait till the regular season and reserve your panicking for anything until the games matter. That is fine and dandy. But the fact that that decision came that they did not start any starters hardly in here, and we only saw one snap of Kyle Pitts, the fourth overall pick from the Atlanta Falcons. Now, albeit, it was a great snap, 27-yard game um, that he was able to take down through there with speed. He showed that. Uh, he showed that he could catch the football off a rollout, rollout from Felipe Franks, which looked very good. But that was only a small sample size and taste that Arthur Smith left with us leading into week one of the season. And... Look, it wasn't just him that left starters out. As you heard JR say in that video of his recap of the preseason, uh, a lot of coaches in the NFL were debating that and had left a lot of their starters out 
going into the season. One, because you got a 17 weeks now as opposed to 16 weeks in the season. So you're trying to preserve as much energy and health as you can going into week one. Um, you definitely want to start things off right. Even the Philadelphia Eagles left a lot of their starters out. And Jalen Hurts, who has been named recently officially their starter for week one, did not play but a few snaps, I believe, in that first preseason game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So this is, wasn't something new this year. Uh, Arthur, Arthur Smith made that decision, and uh, other coaches made that decision as well, especially rookie coaches coming into the NFL, that they were not going to play their starters going in. So, hey, it's all good. But it was something that many of us fans in Atlanta were not used to, especially when you're coming off a 4-12 and season, to choose not to play your guys that much, if any, especially the center that you're going to be relying on in Matt Hennessy. Um, we heard rumors that, hey, of course, you know, they were trying to go after uh, a veteran, from the New England Patriots. Well, that didn't happen. So they pretty much got out of that bid and are sticking with Matt Hennessy going into his second year as the center. That's going to be something very interesting to see. Now, another decision that they made uh, as we go through this tour, Josh Andrews, a guy that's been somewhat of a journeyman who they chose and looked like early on and it was reported that he was in the lead to win that starting left guard spot for the Atlanta Falcons. Now, I know this made a lot of Falcons fans' mouths drop, especially if you're supposed to be committed to protecting our 36-year-old quarterback in Matt Ryan, who has had a lot of success with the Atlanta Falcons, and this is the guy that you're going to choose. Now, I probably will be the first to say that I probably was one of the only ones that was on this train of Josh Andrews starting, and he was well on his way, made no mistake about it, too, being able to show that he could start in the NFL and help protect Matt Ryan alongside Jake Matthews and in between him and Matt Hennessy. But unfortunately, uh, he went from catching cramps in the heat in Miami to continuing that same thing down here in Atlanta when he got back to ultimately breaking his hand and is now is out for a little time now. Arthur Smith, you guys know, did make it known that because of the way the rules are now with injury reserve, guys are not having to be on there as long as they used to in the past. So he's saying there is a possibility that Josh Andrews could come back in some capacity later on during the season. And you know this is a guy that they wanted to start because it brought Terry Fontenot out to see how Josh Andrews was going um, and doing during those last cramps he caught here in Atlanta. So that tells you they wanted this guy to start. But now they will have to roll out with their next decision that we want to take a tour to with possibly going with, and looks like strongly, they are going to go with the rookie Jalen Mayfield, who has not played a lot of snaps in the NFL at left guard. So this is going to be interesting to see how the rookie is going to do against that powerful Philadelphia Eagle front that Arthur Smith said, hey, at some point, you got to get baptized by fire, and he is definitely going to be immersed in some deep waters when he deals with this front come up week one, uh, September 12th. So we'll see how that goes, which brings me to my next decision that the Atlanta Falcons made, Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot together. They supported Matt Ryan. And how did they do that? They started off by restructuring his contract for the fourth time in Matt Ryan's Atlanta Falcons career. Now, this definitely made a lot of Falcons fans' mouths drop. Why? Because they were clamoring. A lot of us were clamoring for a new quarterback change. A lot of fans, hey, let's admit it, don't believe in Matt Ryan, especially at 36 years old, that he can lead his team back to another Super Bowl and even possibly win it for that matter. So the fact that Terry Fontenot, them, would restructure Matt Ryan's contract made a lot of miles drop. But, you know, a lot of excuses was made after that happened. Of course, you know that they felt like, hey, well, after this year, the cap is going back up after being in a dire year because of the COVID-19 the previous year that kind of hurt the cap. So if they wanted to get rid of Matt Ryan in the second year of that restructured deal, they could. Now, we shall see 
and that shall remain and be continued if that is a possibility next year in 2022 if they decide with the cap going up to move on from Matt Ryan. But as of right now, not only did they support Matt Ryan in a restructure, they went out in the draft and got him another weapon in Kyle Pitts that we just talked about that sprung off that 27-yard game and gave us the only taste that we were going to see of him in the preseason, in that third preseason game, and brought that weapon and presented it to Matt Ryan. Now, I know, again, this made a lot of Atlanta Falcons fans' miles drop to the floor, especially when they realized that Justin Fields, uh, their mobile dual-threat QB, was still left on the board and was actually dropping until the Chicago Bears jumped up Many spots to get him, if I'm not mistaken, at number 11. So, to not take Justin Fields, and that is still a debate right now, because everything Justin has done up to this point has looked good to many other fans that clamored for him, and we did not take him, and they're wondering if the Atlanta Falcons made the right decision on that. We shall see if those decisions pan out not to take Justin Fields and elect to take Kyle Pitts at the fourth overall pick, especially a tight end. Now, let's get to another thing that led to with Arthur Smith coming out and talking about after they made these picks in the NFL draft and selecting Kyle Pitts, that if the Atlanta Falcons were looking for a rebuild and they hired the wrong coach. Now, this is all coming based on the fact that we now know, based on Arthur, Arthur Blank, that the Julio trade was inevitable. Julio had already asked to be traded from the Atlanta Falcons prior to Arthur Smith taking the job. And Arthur Smith knew this the whole time, but he would not throw the superstar under the bus for any matter in any talks that they had. You know, hey, Julio Jones came out and said that he was ready to go on live TV with Shannon Sharp. So after that, you know, a deal had to be done and they had to get a disgruntled superstar out of their organization because he did not want to be there and the rumor also surfaced well within that mix that Arthur Smith and weren't happy anyway that the fact they weren't seeing Julio Jones showing up in enough of the Atlanta Falcons organized practices when they were practicing and we heard Arthur Smith I'm not going to Arthur, Arthur Blank I'm not going to hash, rehash all of that that he said recently but Arthur Blank is still not happy about how that situation went down, but that is not a decision on Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot. In this case, it was a decision mainly on Julio Jones, and they went on ahead and cooperated with it and made it happen and sent him over to Tennessee for a couple of picks for us, uh, a second round pick, and I think a conditional fourth round pick, something of that matter. But let's move on and take our tour through the next decision that was made, uh, hey, 53-man roster is done and set, so we thought. They got this roster set, and you heard Arthur Smith make mention that the roster is fluid. It really wasn't guaranteed and set in stone just yet. There could be some moves possibly, and the one that got me was the fact that they cut Quadre Olison. Now, this is, of course, after the roster set on Tuesday, which they were one of the first teams, if not the first team, to have their 53-man roster set before noon so that they can get ready for their Tuesday practice. You cut this man on Thursday right before they're getting ready to take a little break from that Friday, Saturday, and have a Sunday off before returning back to the facility and preparing for the Philadelphia Eagles week one, and it just still, guys, has me shocked. And they claimed the gentleman, Wayne Goldman, um, off waivers, who was recently cut by the 49ers, had a pretty decent season taken over for Saquon Barkley over there with the New York Giants, who was injured, turned in over 600 and some yards, and had six touchdowns rushing. So, the guy comes in with a little bit more experience than Quadre Olison. It's cool, but this definitely left some fans who really felt like Olison was going to take that leap under Arthur Smith. And we know Arthur Smith loves to run the football. That is not going to happen. Now, it kind of reminds me of what the Falcons did when Dan Quinn was here in 2016, which ultimately turned into our Super Bowl run year 
with Nick Williams. If a lot of you remember the wide receiver, Nick Williams, formerly of the Washington Redskins, now named the football Washington football team. I remember Nick Williams making the roster that year, and I saw a tweet. His parents had congratulated him and everything, only to find out a couple of days later they end up cutting Nick Williams. Williams off of the 53 man roster. Now they ultimately brought Nick Williams back to the practice squad. I don't know if that's going to happen uh, as far as Quadre Otterson goes because, hey, it was also known that Deontay Foreman, who was brought to the Falcons practice squad, cut off the 53, um, was recently released as well. But they had already signed a linebacker and a receiver to the practice squad um, prior to releasing Deontay Foreman. So we shall see uh, if that happens, if maybe they bring Quadre Olison back, which leads me to another running back that kind of hurt some hearts. Uh, another decision that was made before that to cut Javion Hawkins. Now, a lot of people saw Javion Hawkins to be a guy that they thought because of his speed um, and what he brought to the table in that element who Kitchens talked about is the only guy that had that serious speed element in that running back room. They released him. He ultimately ends up getting picked up by the Tennessee Titans, but later on cut from there as well. So it's been some very interesting situations that have happened and decisions that have been made, which both guys have agreed upon and they're showing an alliance with each other. Now, even though they were hired at separate times, Terry Fontenot had no control over hiring Arthur Smith, Arthur Blank with the, went with the approach of taking and hiring his coach first, then the GM. So these guys are working as co-workers and not as boss um, and employee up under the GM in, in normal format. So this is going to be an interesting uh, thing to see in a relationship to see grow because of knowing that between these two guys. And right now they are step by step alignment with each other and are not allowing any media or anyone on the outside to divide them in their decisions and if one comes out with a decision it won't be long before the other one comes out and supports and backs up that decision as we've seen that happen already throughout this season now it will remain to be seen if this is truly a rebuild because many fans would argue based on decisions and things that have been made on some of those decisions we just talked about that it can't be looking like a win now mode when you already don't have Julio Jones and some of the other decisions that you're making to keep a guy like Matt Ryan who is 36 on the roster and you're not even really looking toward the future. So many fans arguments about that because you didn't take a quarterback um, to at least be the heir apparent behind Matt Ryan, that someone Matt Ryan could train up. And Felipe Franks and now Josh Rosen, by the way, the other decision that uh, Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot made have kept three quarterbacks on the roster. Now, many believe that Felipe Franks uh, will ultimately be going to the practice squad. I'm for one right now. I'm not a believer of that because I believe they could try to use him somewhat how the New Orleans Saints used Tyson Hill over there with the New Orleans Saints to come in for a spell and run certain type of plays, uh, read option plays, uh, QB draws and stuff like that for the Atlanta Falcons, uh, putting Matt Ryan on the sideline for a little bit. But hey, I could be wrong. I'm not perfect in any regard on anything that I see by the Atlanta Falcons. I just know I love my team just like you guys do. But I thought that this would be a perfect week to go through a little tour of some of these decisions and ultimately, we will all be watching to see if any of these decisions made by these two guys, Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith, will accumulate in more wins than the Atlanta Falcons had in 2020. Other than that, man, hey, this is y'all's chance. Leave your comments if you got any lasting frustrations about some of these things we talked about. If I miss some of the decisions that were made um, to the ones that I talked about in this video, Put them down there, man. Get your frustrations out before we go into week one because I would like for us, as they like to say in football, to empty out the bucket of any other things that we feel about this team going in so that we can have a fresh mind and a fresh view going into week one 
And I'm looking forward and excited. I know me and the guys are to talking about the Atlanta Falcons first regular season game with the Philadelphia Eagles. Other than that, man, hey, I'm Toby D. This is the Atlanta Falcons Think Tank. Peace. I'm out.